So this afternoon, we had two great presentations from Timothy Brown, who I'll only say this once, uh, the Berlin patient. Okay, Because um, I, 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 I would suspect you're getting a little tired of that. Um, considering that I'm from the United States and now live again in the United States, I am a little tired of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, Timothy Brown right. <laughs> and Matt Sharp, who um, today presented a great presentation on cure research and some of the issues around that. And what I found particularly interesting was your personal story about being in a gene therapy study. Right. So, um, we're sort of winging it here today, so we'll okay. bounce back and forth. So, why don't you tell me about the gene therapy and, and what you had done and how sure. that came to be? Sure, okay. So, uh, as I talked about today in the session, I, um, the trial I was in was using a gene therapy approach to making HIV or CD4 cells resistant to HIV. And it was a pretty risky procedure, pretty new. I was in a, the first cohort of patients trying to look to see if this approach would get our CD4 cells to rise. All of us were controlled with therapy and, and undetectable, but we'd been living with HIV a long time and never been able to get our CD4 cells to rise. So um, the, after one year I've been in the study, they presented data on the cohort in, in various co conferences, basically showing that uh, all, everyone but one person gets a significant rise in CD4 cells that's sustained over a year. So um, while it's not a cure, it's providing uh, an improvement in what we already have, especially for those people who have been treated sequentially with treatment over the years. Yeah. I've been on every antiretroviral drug, and uh, I'm on a good regimen right now that's keeping me undetectable, but for some reason my CD4 cells never went up. So with do this you approach, feel, do you it worked. Do you physically feel any different? Any yeah, better that's, from that's a this? question I get all the time, and I didn't talk about that in the session today. Um, but they didn't really look at how I was doing clinically. I mean, it wasn't an outcome of the study. But um, the one story I tell about my case is that I, uh, despite control of HIV with antiretroviral therapy, I had consistent bacterial infections, uh, upper respiratory, bacter uh, um, bacterial pneumonias, sometimes being in the hospital. Even though I was well and doing well on antiviral therapy, there was something about my immune system that wasn't controlling that, those pneumonias. So with this approach, um, over a pa the past year, I've not had one bacterial infection, not even a sinus cold. Wow, that's great. Um, yes. So everything has been, can, I think, controlled with this therapy, whether that's, you know, really happening, that it'll have to be shown in the studies. At least now you have some, so yeah. it's worth it so yeah. far. Yeah, yeah How about energy? So that's an interesting question because I'm actually very fatigued mm -hmm. all the time now, and I think that's just a, a result of me being 55 years old. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I'm just older now. I get that too. It's so. like, well, you're getting older. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And you, listening to uh, Timothy, your, your story and going through the, the leukemia treatment and um, before having heard, you know, I had read, but actually hearing mm -hmm. uh, your experience, it would make me wonder, well, you know, if this was offered to me as a way of eradicating HIV, would I actually go through it? You went right. through so much. Um, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling well. Um, and back to that question of whether whether you would do it, I wouldn't have done it if if it hadn't been for the leukemia. That was yeah. my first uh, objective at that the point that I chose to do that. Um, like I said, I said no to to it when it was first proposed to me because I thought the leukemia was in control, and I thought that I could take the um, my regimen um, forever or um, a variation thereof. And uh, <clears throat> um, so I thought that uh, um, my leukemia was in remission, and I thought that um, why take the risk? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Um, and I was telling Matt um, that 
he took more risk than I did because um, I had to get the transplant and he didn't have to go through the treatment that he went through. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. Uh, to both of you, there was such a delay in recognition of what was been going mm -hmm. on when we talk about cure or talking about cure research. I remember first hearing about your case and then not hearing anything. Yeah. And then wondering why are we hearing about this at the conferences or or anything? And uh, the you know I got the answer sort of reading up on historically what mm -hmm. had happened. So what are your thoughts about the resistance to acknowledging a man has now gone from HIV positive to negative and our views around looking at cures versus maintaining antiretrovirals? Yeah. Well, if I can take a stab at that, sure. I think. You know, I think Tim's case was, was unique and it was unusual and one that probably won't be repeated in, in, you know, in order to have a broad impact. Um, but what it did do is open the door. And I think that's what we have to keep thinking. And it took a while for that door to crack open and to get wider. And I think it's getting wider and more people are getting interested, more money is coming to the cure research. People like Tim and I are getting out and talking about this. There's a lot of story, stories in media now, HIV-related media, and also uh, general media. There was a huge story about uh, Cure Research in Discover Magazine in the, in the U.S. So all of these things have to, it just takes a while for people to sort of broaden their minds and, mm -hmm. and they want, people want to see results. Yeah. When they see just one person being cured with a remarkable case, it's maybe still there's a lot of doubt mm -hmm. and until you see more people you know more studies showing that there's progress i think it's going to take a while but mm -hmm. i think the door's open yeah yeah it's great to hear about just sort of to wrap up i wanted to ask you about battle fatigue because you had a great uh, message around that to those who might be feeling like We've been in this a long time, right. and we've got side effects, and we've got this, that, and what have you. And so, what do you say to people who are feeling the battle fatigue? Um, that uh, um, because of what I've gone through, there is hope. Um, mm -hmm. There is hope, and uh, we can uh, hope for a cure for everyone, no matter what their their financial situation is no matter what country they live in, um, whether a poor country or um, a rich country, uh, I, I'm hoping that everyone will be eventually be cured. Mm -hmm. That's and it's nice to have that hope. Yeah, finally. Right. And any sort of wrapping up words you might want to add? Just that, yeah, I think hope is, is a good word. I think that you know, the thing I closed with in my talk today was to imagine a world without AIDS. Yeah. I mean, we're so used to living with AIDS in our life, mm -hmm. living with HIV, living with medications, right. living with doctor's appointments. Um, think of it and, and, and let's, let's collectively think about what it would be like to not have all those things in our lives. Yeah. And I think it's possible. I think the writing's yeah. on the wall. Yeah. The scientists are engaged and interested. The money's coming forward slowly. Mm -hmm. Now we just need a push from the community to understand that it's possible. And we need also yeah. results from trials. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for both of you taking out uh, a bit of time out of the no day because you're two both very popular folks. Folks. Thank you. And Thank you. Uh, especially also, well, both, but I know you're, as you said, private around your life, so I just want to thank you for sharing this because it's uh, very helpful for a lot He's of people. He's not private anymore. <laughs> He's not private. No. Formerly private. Yeah, formerly private. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dan, thank but you. thank you. Thank you you're so welcome. much. Thanks. Thanks for having us.